valedictorian of the Lake Forest Academy graduating class, it is my privilege indeed to introduce Mr. Franklin Shepard. He wrote that song for his own commencement here, with words by his classmate and collaborator Charles Prager. That is long ago, 1955. None of us here was born yet. But it was the year Franklin Shepard went from Lake Forest to the Juilliard School of Music and on to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, our distinguished guest, the great songwriter and film producer, Mr. Franklin Shepard. Why? 
electronic print yet? And I say yes. And the same voice says, you have a statement on winning the Pulitzer Prize for drama. And I start to say, could you hang up because I got to call Frank? And then I remember we don't speak anymore. You get a lot more offers when you win an award. I spend a lot of time flying from New York to California just to say no. Very excited. 
excited about the movie. Well, why don't you just go over there and make it right, Charlie? Wait a minute. Mary, you set this up. Oh, now higher power sets this up. Faith sets this up. God sets this up. Well, all right, I set this up. I knew we had a reservation. I wanted to set up this one last chance to save him. Unbelievable. Wait, oh. I assume you also helped the score for your movie. No. One word answer, Frank. You're not about Miss Gordon. I told Frank to concentrate on producing. I mean, why work in the music department when you can run the whole store? Come on, Charlie. Now you did humiliate that man in front of the entire country. What I did was absolutely stupid. As absolutely stupid as what he's done with his life. Listen to you, Charlie. Listen to how you care. Thank you, friend. What are you saying? Charlie, love. You know, Miss Gordon, 
there is a tribe in Africa that when one of its members does something cruel or evil or betrays them, they don't see him again. They just don't see him. They never talk to him or hear him or acknowledge him in any way. For them, he is dead. Absolutely dead. Listen, he does a money thing. Now 
very well. But you know what? Other people do that. And he does the music thing very well. And you know what? No one does it better.
You know, uh, I introduced Frank Shepard to money, to fame, and to my wife. And suddenly he had money, fame, and my wife. <laughs> Run all our lives, eh? 
I was just starting to tell them about it. <coughs> How'd you get it? My face. I'm decorating this stuff. A prize for bright frame. Here, see all the colors I'm considering? I see all the furniture in hues of identity. See? A chair. A chair. Guy's gonna be a millionaire. <laughs> I just need a year and then I can start all over. Frank, you gotta trace some lines to it. First class champagne. I don't drink. I'm an excessive personality. Too much coffee, too much cigarettes, too much food. Too much Frank. Frank's the only guy in the world that doesn't know you're welcome. <laughs> So, uh, how many people know about those two? Well, it must be one or two to know. Well, I decided not to know. I'm going to get it out of the system. The only she doesn't leave me.
big man out there. <laughs> Listen, you got a ride to this uh, fancy schmancy party? I just wanted to talk to you. I should get to the hospital. Come to the party for five minutes. We'll talk. Gotta yeah. see, gotta see, gotta see the big man. Look at his uh, I gotta go make nice with the back. Uh, Frank, my wife will take you to the bar. <laughs> we won't be able to afford the big man now. Watch. <laughs> I owe you so much. I think there's a conspiracy to keep you from me. I hear all you do is work, work, work. Well, tonight you get El Grande Dream. You get to find out what it's like to be number one. My driver's right over here. Aren't you coming?
Oh! 
about this impending wedding of yours, uh, unless she's pregnant. Get out of it. Huh? <laughs> oh. Have a nice wedding. Huh? <laughs> Unless you really want to, you don't have to. I mean, nobody can make it. I want to. I know why you think that, Charlie, but I love her. Thanks very much.